I, I really wanted to reach out and get in touch with them. And that song is uh, Fetching Pitchfork, which is a really cool tune. And I'm going to play that for you as well uh, during our chat with Mark. We're going to get to know Mark a little bit here. Uh, but their music is really, really cool. It touches on uh, political and social observations with a with a bit of storytelling humor. Uh, it's really good music. I'm really, I've really been enjoying listening to them this week. Um, so please welcome our guest, Mark McGee, to the show, guys. Yeah. Here we are. Let's see, get the audio up and running. Hey, Mark, how's it going, man? Can you hear me well? Yes, I can hear you, mate. I just need to turn another computer off. Uh, the those... Yes, I can hear you. How's there going, we mate? go. Happy days, man. I, I love the fact that you have a professional mic. You've got a lovely boom going. You've got grey headphones. I, it, it delights me to, to get that once in a while. Yeah, it's not often that I'm described as professional, but <laughs> uh, just at the start of the lockdown... I realized that my life was fucked if I didn't get a recording set up and an ability to do my podcast and uh, record music from home. So uh, thanks to more famous and all our patrons, we managed to make it happen and it's kept me busy. That's for sure, mate. Awesome. Awesome. Did you have a podcast before um, the quarantine was, or was this something recent? Yes. My, uh, yeah, but it was a totally, it was a different beast, completely different beast. It was a, uh, an audio podcast. And the format was different. It was more like maybe a couple of times a month, maybe four times max, twice or three times. And it would be like maybe an hour of skits mm -hmm. and um, maybe commenting on what was going on in the world, followed by an extended interview with someone. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know, a lot more thought went into uh, music, special effects, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. The production so now was it's higher. Completely different. Mm -hmm. now it's, uh, uh, lockdown began and I was worried that the people would stop listening to the podcast and I thought I need to do more I need to give my you know uh, my supporters more value mm. and also I like staying connected with people because I'm quite a social person I'm out and about a lot mm. so I just went I'm going to do it every single day and I did I've done that practically every single day since the beginning of lockdown so we've done about 50 or 60 shows I think since March the 23rd well wow. wow, fair play to you and it's all been video, so some of them are in 90 minutes and some of them are, are we went way up to five hours when we get carried away. It does um, happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does happen, mate. So, uh, yeah, but it's been it's been a very strange and interesting time. And, That's for uh, sure. But it's been really good to connect to, to people. And it's just, you, you know yourself, man, it's like there's, there's something still in my head. I'm, I still, you know, I could, I could talk to anyone from anywhere in the world, yet I keep booking people from round the corner for me. Yeah. So I'm just, I need to realize that, wait a minute, we can talk to people. We have the option to... to Ireland! Yeah. Fucking hell, Ireland! Yeah, 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 it's amazing. And, and same with yourself, like, because I, I... Naturally, you know, be, I'm a musician myself, right? I'm a drummer, and I play in a few cover bands, and I manage bands. I'd be kind of similar as to yourself. Like, I'd, I'd manage multiple... Well, you know, I, I can see you, you have a lot of projects. I can tell by you as well. You like to manage different things and, and, and whatnot. You're kind of that kind of proactive dude that likes to put his energy into lots of things. So I'm the same, you know? So it's funny how we're kind of linking together through this and i accidentally came across you as well i've no idea how you came into my uh spotify playlist it, it, and usually it's like irish music because i'm trying to promote irish tunes like you know well yeah. uh, initially you know as well and i was kind of like i was like this song is great who are these guys you know and i had to reach <laughs> out to you and i was like oh my god they're from glasgow how did they get into my playlist <laughs> i'm keeping you in the playlist by the way i'm yeah. not going to take you out but um, oh, I, I thought it was amazing well, i've got i got, got i you know myself and members of the band do have I don't want to sound like one of those Americans that say that they're from Ireland, but we do have family from Ireland, you know, okay. going back, going back to this, uh, the south of Ireland. So, uh, yeah, kind of Irish. Kind of Irish. If it wasn't for Ireland, it wouldn't exist. So, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. like, you know, it's like that way in, the, in Scotland, we've got a newspaper called The Daily Record. And if you've ever drank a bottle of Iron Brew, then you're Scottish. So <laughs> that's what they say. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 of course, now you're you're obviously not playing music now. Are, are you able to write or anything like that, or is this podcast just taking up all of your time? It's, now? it's taking up a bit more time than I would like, to be honest, mm. man. But I'm I'm hopeful that it's you know a, a lot of the the work's been the promoting, mm. and it seems like now we have a lot, we do have a regular viewers tuned in. Mm. So. I think it's going to take a little bit less time with the viewers. The technical side, touch wood, is getting a lot easier. Mm. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of technical issues that I was constantly battling against that seem to have resolved for the most part. Promotion-wise, 
it, if I'm really busy, I can justify just, you know, putting up a, a link to the show and we'll still have people tuned in. Mm. Uh, so it's it's getting, I think it's, le- and also there's more people contacting me who want to come on the show. So it, it feels like there's le- it's less me trying to find people and stuff like that. So we're booked up for the next two weeks, which is quite a good feeling right now. Mm. Um, I don't, it's, it's a tough one, you know yourself, you don't want to book too far in the future because it almost feels like you're trapped a bit. Well, that's yeah. how I felt. And um, when I booked the last time I booked two weeks ahead, I was like, "Oh my god, that seems like a lot of work." But uh, I've I've took off I took off the weekend there, mm. and I just think that by maybe just taking Saturday and Sunday off, it doesn't feel like trapped. It's actually quite freeing to know that we're booked up for the next two weeks. I don't need to worry about that side of things for a wee while. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So yeah, as yeah. far as writing goes, within the first week, I was like so excited because the first time I've ever had a, a recording set up in my own gaff, so I was like really chuffed about that. And I got about four songs recorded, just demos, and uh, I was started off very productively. But I've not had time to to go back since. So yeah, I'm going yeah. to do that. That's my. It's on my to do list today. It's just been. I was talking to uh, my friend Bram in Scotland. He's doing uh, the Old Alliance, which is a uh, Scottish hip hop show that's in France, based in France. So I did an interview for that earlier on, and I did an interview for a, a documentary that's getting made uh, by a girl in Czech Republic just now. Wow, So awesome. we kind of doing a bit of that, man. Wow, that's and great. So it's been keeping busy, but I, I, I'm really looking forward to just spending two days recording and writing, because yeah. writing-wise, it's just a bit, it's hard to write a wee bit, I think, just when I've been too busy, and secondly, it's really hard to know what to think. Yeah, in this moment was, in time. Yeah, I'm quite an opinionated person, but I'm just like, this is fucked up, man. I can't. Mm. There's so much disinformation going around mm. that I think I'd be a bit of a fool to put something on record, you know, talking about what I think is yeah. happening because I genuinely don't have a clue. But the other stuff that I recorded is just kind of the stuff that I'd already started. It's kind of, it feels like the right thing to talk about, mm. but it's not specifically about it. Although if you listen to it, you think it's about it, if that yeah. makes sense. Of course, yeah. And be- because your music is quite political anyway to, to, to begin with, right? The Gyro Babies is quite... Um, you, you do speak about uh, sort of social and political and you kind of p- you pick at it. So th- it's kind of in your nature, right? To sort of be like that, to sort of pick at the situation. So is it hard yeah. for you to resist that a little bit now? Because of, of course, and I agree with you, there is a lot of disinformation now and it's so hard to, to know what is actually truth and you hear so many different things and you seem like an open-minded person like myself that you know wouldn't initially sort of buy into, let's say, you know, the information we're being fed because of yeah. historical sort of proof of it not being you know necessarily always truthful. What, How are you yeah, struggling with that? Well, where I stand is, is that of course, I don't just uh, blindly believe whatever mainstream narrative you're being fed, mm. but I also don't believe some random guy calling himself a doctor on YouTube. Mm. I don't believe that shit either. Mm. So trying to find the you know what's going on is it's going to take a little bit more time and a little bit more data needs to come out mm. before I can you know they, there's no there's no rush to take a side. Don't need to take sure. a side right now. They don't really know what's going on, but. I, I'm, I would just tell, I've just been, you know, I'll be get, getting a, a few internet arguments about it because, you know, I've been telling my friends, like, don't, don't fall for mm. the bullshit on both, you know, on both sides, there's a, there's a lot of bullshit coming from people. And I hate the whole idea that if you, if you question some random YouTube guy, mm. that you are the mainstream narrative, yeah. that's, that's not, that's a straw man argument. That's not a real thing. You, there's bullshit. That it's not mainstream, but I can still be bullshit. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I think thing, time's moving so fast. The news changes so much every day that it'd be, I think, to pick it apart, it's going to be dated very quickly. Mm. So there's no point in discussing things on a record, on a song. Yeah. And, but there's plenty of other songs to, I mean, I think that, you know, we, we did, our earlier stuff was a lot more specifically political. Mm. You know, you could, you could, you knew exactly what it was about. And I think that the last album, uh, well, Who Took Utopia was more, we avoided the specifics of mm. of politics, mm-hmm. uh, but we were just more drawn to the emotion of of the human psyche. But obviously, it's all it's still political if you're you're going to dig deep into it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that the, the tunes I've been working on just now with Jackal Trades and Gyro Babies, there's a couple of both coming out very soon. As um, yeah, more about the the human psyche, and we just released one. Jackal Trades is in my other band. We just released a song on Monday, but. Uh, which kind of sounds like it was written this 
recently bought it. Was, mm -hmm. It was actually written about a year ago, but it only okay. came out um, this week. And yeah, it's not that. That's more about sort of coming from a, a, a psychedelic look at sort of mental health and stuff, mm -hmm. which technically isn't political. But my opinion is, is that everything is political. Yeah. Some level, do you know what I mean? Oh yeah, totally, man. I've definitely heard people say that that everything. If you're, if you know, if you meet, if you meet somebody and you're, you're trying to have a conversation with them. Oh, look, I'm not into politics. I'm into, but it's like no, like everything is political as much as everything is almost sort of sociological, psychological. It, it, these are all real like pillars. Yeah, just because you're not interested in politics doesn't mean politics isn't interested in you. Politics yeah. is very interested in you and your thoughts, and as well to spend money mm. to to decide how you should think and shape how you react to things. So this is a very interesting time. And I think just right now, I think that people have just got to be out. We, can, we can't rule out that, I mean, where I'm at just now is, is that I, I think there is a virus. <laughs> I think that proof mm. to me says that there is a virus going about. I don't think that's a hoax. Mm. To me, it's very strange that I would say that the, it, to me, it looks like the, the propaganda seems to be coming from the media and the mainstream that we should all just get back to work. Mm -hmm. And they said at the start, it's not that bad a virus. Now it seems to be like, let's get back to work, it's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Now, as much as I want to get back to work, and I, I, I watch this video saying, it's all going to be fine if we go back to work. Mm -hmm. I want that to be the truth as well. But I don't really trust the Tories, and they seem to think that we should just get back to work. Mm -hmm. So it's just, who knows what's going on, man. Yeah. Very interesting times. Very. But, you know, just, just be, everyone should be careful and take everything they hear. Well, a pinch of salt. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you're you're based in you're in Glasgow now at the moment, are you? Yes, mate. Yeah. Okay. Live How is it Glasgow. like over there? Well, what's actually? Can you tell me actually? Just I know off topic. Of, well, it's kind of on topic, but off the topic of the virus and the current situation. What's the music scene like there under normal cir circumstances? Uh, it's brilliant. It's yeah. really good, man. I've not. Mm. I, th I think it's probably after London the best in in the UK. Mm. Um, but I've I've not been to all the different scenes, but. It just seems like we're at, you know we've played in different cities in England, mm -hmm. probably as, as far as we've got, and uh, I just think there is something really good about Glasgow. It's quite small, and I think it goes to that that state's advantage. Mm -hmm. So you've got different little niches every night of the week popping up, and there's something for everyone there. Mm. And I I would recommend as a night out, especially um, you know if you're Irish and you come to Glasgow, you will get treated well mm -hmm. as well. It's just that there's that kind of um, you know there's a a great friendship between the Irish and the Scottish. Mm. And yeah, I'd, I'd recommend Glasgow for a night out. I think the music scene is brilliant. It could probably be doing with a little bit, um, you know, more funding mm -hmm. and maybe, or the funding that does exist can maybe be spent better than it is okay. at the moment. Uh, just to kind of take people from that next level. Cause it's yeah. really, it feels like it's quite, there's lots of bands that just can become, uh, well, a bit of hard work. They can become big enough mm -hmm. to play massive crowds in glasgow but it's like how do we take them outside of glasgow to the rest of the i get you yeah the, of the uk and ireland and europe and just getting i think it's just there seems to be, uh, people seem to stagnate when it comes yeah. to getting outside of glasgow a little bit so the, it could be doing better but as an actual for a night out and mm. for brilliant new music then glasgow's amazing and if anyone's curious about the scene then then do check out my show what pretty much every night at seven o'clock it's called you call that radio and it's not just glasgow we do we do um all over scotland and all over the world we'll have guests on from every walk of life but just because my background is glasgow underground scene whether mm. that's um whether that's rock music punk techno hip-hop it's just that's where i'm from so i know more stuff and more interesting people in this area but yeah if anyone wants to and also man i'd be really interested to hear any tips you've got for the Irish music scene because I think that that's one way that we could really improve both our scenes is by coming together and doing more gig swaps without yes. there being a middleman record label getting in the way taking their cut. 100% man I'd love to arrange something like that because it's I don't know how like in Glasgow but it, it's quite there's so many bands in Dublin man it's so people would say it's oversaturated you know with so many different genres in a beautiful way so yeah. you, you're gonna have music every single night of the week in Dublin and um, the, the main issue is, is quite simply the same as what is happening in Glasgow and possibly in so many other uh, cities across the world or, or countries where there is no uh, institution basically set up 
uh, legit, like whatever it is, there's not enough institutions or there's not, not enough support from wherever it can be the government or, you know, um, companies, let's say record labels uh, to help musicians get to that next level. So there is that huge situation where a lot of them are staying sort of on that sort of low end um, exposure level and, and are depending on, unfortunately, you know, these Spotify uh playlists and everything to go digital you know everything is like now how can it try it, it's easier for things to track around the world in a way but that means that there's a lot more saturation as well with regard to that there's so much music how not everybody can get a chance to hear it so how do you surface to the top amongst everything else well, and I it's think the we same need, we need creators mm. like yourself that that playlist you're doing in spotify i think we just need mm. to find a space for uh curators who have a good sense of not only good music, but who is actually willing to put the work in and take it actually. I see a lot of money being spent on bands who actually don't really. It doesn't. They don't. They don't. They don't bleed rock and roll. They're just like they're doing it for something to do. Maybe mm. get a girlfriend and then just quit. And I think there's sometimes yeah. a lot of a lot. I think there's a lot of class issues as well. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to just be middle class, get yourself the best of gear, spend money on good graphic designer, mm. good um, flyers, and create this thing with a lot of money behind it. And then, but when it comes to it, the music isn't good enough to last or, or touch that it's many too people. too plastic or whatever. Yeah, it's missing the soul, perhaps. You can spend, or... you, can just, mm. you can buy success up to a certain point. You know what I mean? You yeah, can, you're right, actually. Yeah, that's, well, that's an interesting it's point. fake. It's fake. And um, if less the music's really good, uh, then people are just going to go into the next thing, that, the next shiny thing. Mm -hmm. Did you you did some gigs in Australia? Did did did, was, did that happen? Was it? No, no. Okay, that didn't happen. Oh, I must have no. read that on a different uh, no, somebody else's um, blog. We went to we went to South Korea with the Twist X. So that might be I don't know if that's maybe what it is. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no. The pretty much we've been stuck in stuck in Scotland and mm. occasionally England. We love Manchester. Manchester seems to have taken us to their hearts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, Linda's Farm Festival in, in, in um, the north of England. We have a great time down there. Mm. We did go to London v at the very start when we were very young and naive and we played five gigs in four days and we got very drunk and we were, it wasn't very good. And we weren't very good and we had a random new bassist on guitar in, in the band and that was a kind of learning experience but great fun to go down to london mm. but yeah i think i think uh, the, i think if we went back to london now we would have an actual clue about what we're doing but there was plans to go to london in august there was plans to go to we're going to poland we're going to go to germany mm. we're going to go to holland we were making all these plans for august it was our first ever european tour but obviously that's not happening anymore so we'll just hope that, that maybe next year 2021 we can can revisit that because it's something that yeah. i'd really like to do it's the final kind of thing for the bucket list i think our bands achieved much more than i could have dreamed possible mm. it's been a, an amazing journey and just it's opened so many doors i've met so many brilliant people and i love it and i think that the one thing i'd like to do is just play to some far-flung areas that, and that would be it that'd make me delighted Awesome. Amazing, man. Yeah, I wish I wish you the best with the tour. I mean, that's something that I would love to get into. It seems like a lot of work, especially, I mean, you are the booking agent as well, I take it. So you're doing all yeah. the bookings and the handling. Yeah, man, the, it's a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nightmare. So. It's like, I, I, I've, I've tried and failed at it a few times. Mm. It's just, normally you get everything starting to come together and then you've got a band member who goes, oh, I can't do that day or I can't, you know. Or they don't want to commit to something that's so far ahead mm. in the future. But in order to get paid, you need to, in order to, for, to cover your costs, even mm. uh, these booking agents need time to promote you because you're relatively unknown in these in these markets. Sure. So you need to give the booking agent time to promote you guys. And uh, yeah, man, it's you, what, I think it's a lot easier if you've got a if you've got a solid band that, that really believe in the band and they've not really getting distracted by anything else, whether that's you know. It could be anything from other projects. It could be uh, family issues. It could be everybody. I think if you've got a really good, strong band that just really want to take their music to the next level, mm -hmm. then it's probably not as difficult as it has been for me. But, you know, my band, they're a nightmare. And they always have been. I love them, but they're a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And just try to get them to agree to things in the future it has been tricky. And in the past, it's quite been difficult. But the new way that I was doing it was... 
because we have um, over the years found some amazing what we say uh, I don't want to say backup musicians hmm. I would say like deputies alternatives yeah mm -hmm. deputies or deputy makes them sound less than and it's not true they're actually just as good mm -hmm. uh, but yeah I think uh, yeah I think by having that as, as backups meant that I had the, the the ability and the confidence just to just go booking yeah you have freedom I just went booking I just went right I'm going to book it all and mm. I worry about you know if someone can't do the drums and we'll get another drummer for that day mm. and I think that it was just a lack of confidence that stopped me doing this before because of course I'm going to get a drummer who's going to go an all expenses paid trip to Berlin to play a gig yeah you know I mean I've dude I'm a drummer over here way, I, I do it with thinking you that way but that's mm. the way I think you've got to do it and then yeah. and I reckon that once you've actually lined it up and you've got this amazing schedule of beautiful European cities then I'm sure everyone will make it work you know what I mean oh yeah you'll make it work won't you that's it, you'll guys. You'll make it work. You turn up. You 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 play Amsterdam, wouldn't you? You play it. Of course they would. It's it seems quite far fetched, I guess. And and I guess there has been a lot of you know promises, and people are afraid to sort of. I guess it just seems so unrealistic, right? To to to, to some perceptions, you know, people's brains. I mean, uh, oh, we're going on a tour next year, especially if one, you know. Um, especially coming from a small island or, you know, I don't know, we're, maybe we're just, it's our psychology, right? Why, like, why did you have that fear yourself, like, to go towards whatever you called it, but, you know, to, to, to say, oh, uh, you know, I can, I can do it with, you know, alternatives, as you call them. Um, but it, it's like something we have programmed almost within the musical and artistical uh, world that, that where we are because in the states people are way more fucking confident with their artistic approach i think um yeah. from what it seems i was over in california recently and they are so they approach it so differently they're almost kind of like in a, in a sharkish sort of way you know um whereas here it's a little bit different do you do you feel have you noticed anything like that is there anything you can add to well i, th I think the, the the american way is that you can just get a bunch of people that you like or you don't even need to like them mm. but you can just get a van together and make music and just travel drive up and down true it's a lot easier make, to get and around and then learn your you know there's no there's no airplanes there's no passport mm -hmm. issues there's no boats it's just like you can just drive and mm. i think that that's uh you know that that opens up a lot of possibilities mm. americans do seem to have a lot more confidence going on mm. sometimes misplaced confidence true even so i think that's but i think yeah that it's interesting to me but when I've been dealing with European booking agents is, is that all of them are very happy to speak to me. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll check the videos out, they'll go, oh, this looks good. You know, that to them, we've got some decent numbers now on, mm -hmm. on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. We've got mm -hmm. some decent numbers there. We've got some, some of the videos are really well produced by people at Martin Windy Bank, who's done a great job on them. Mm -hmm. so the older ones are a bit rubbish because I made them myself and I didn't know what I was doing. But, mm -hmm. you know, over the years, we've kind of, got quite some good stuff out there now and the yeah the european because do want to talk to us and it's i suppose it's a confidence thing maybe um being from a working class background where you you put you think well until someone gives you the stamp of approval you know mm. a magic um record exec comes in waves a magic money wand and just says you know gives you the stamp of approval but there is no stamp of approval you need to just give yourself a stamp of approval and get on with it and make things happen Mm, that's great advice man yeah absolutely i guess it is hard to sort of work without getting the feedback where one in one's own head matters right you might get feedback from a hundred people but it mightn't be the feedback that one's own perception is expecting which is quite the shame and, and the best feedback one can give or the best stamp of approval as you say is yourself man that's that's awesome advice for for uh, musicians out there yeah, and obviously it gets um you know you just just by you know i've got a friend who just made a spreadsheet of just looked up every single venue in europe and mm. booking agents got as many as they could in a big spreadsheet gathered it all and just went through them all one by one mm. and they booked their own european tour 22 dates just went just, they're, a, they're a couple so it's a bit easier for them it's just a two-piece mm. but they just went and did it man and then once you do that you open up the doors to meeting um various other contacts and you know this is advice coming from a guy who's not managed to figure it out himself mm. but you know just do it you can just do it yourself not now obviously <laughs> there's nobody's uh nobody's prepare for it now any irish or uk acts right now uh but i think that you know i think that and also we've got then there's the added complications of brexit next year as well so that's why i was just so determined to make it happen this year because mm. i do suspect there'll be a lot of red tape in the way you know from january onwards mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. But 
you know, it will happen. If it's going to happen, it'll happen. Uh, I'm, I'm confident that we will want to return to live music and we will want to see bands from different countries again. I mm. mean, that's just, uh, that's going to happen. But I just, I do worry that there's just going to be wee extra costs and red tape in the way that mm. means that it will go back to that, you know, you need, you need the label to take care of that stuff for you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Can you? I'd love to play a song for the for the, having great chat with you. By the way, man. Um, yeah. It's also awesome to connect. Um, I'd love to play a song by uh, the Gyro Baby. So this this your most recent one, is it? Uh, Fetching Pitchfork. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. That that came out um, on Spotify in February or March, I think. Uh, February the first, something like that. Cool. Uh, yeah. We just we just we actually just made a video for our, it was our tenth anniversary for the first ever gig we played live. Mm. in December so I just thought it'd be nice to just do a, a new tune for to kind of tie in with that so we, we brought the video in December uh, this tune came out on Spotify in February and the CDs actually should be out in the next couple of weeks with yeah, a couple they... of bonus tracks and uh, remixes and stuff like that awesome man well I'm going to play it for the guys now um, so yep. the Gyro Babies Fetching Pitchfork
All right, that was the Gyro Babies with Fetching Pitchfork. And I'm here with the awesome Mark McGee. Let me just unmute you, Mark. I think I have you muted. Let's see if I can get you back on the mic. Yeah. There cool. we go. Yeah, there I'm we back, go. I'm back. Awesome. And yeah, the first first verse, right? You mentioned virus with attraction, which is uh which is uh, yes, I don't know what I'm I don't know as, yeah. I don't know my avatar. A virus getting traction. Yeah, I do. I, I got it. You know, that's one of those things it's like proof that <laughs> I knew something. The Illuminati. Yeah, All that man. stuff I seen there was a guy who uh, a rapper who predicted a virus in 20, 20 back in nineteen twelve and not sorry, not nineteen twelve, that would have been good. No, in about two thousand and twelve. Yeah. And um, everybody's saying that that proves that he's Illuminati and he knew that this was all going to happen. Um, yeah. But it's... I think it might just be that it rhymed better. But I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's it's mental. Like, I guess, like, it's it's sort of, like, you know, people talk as well of, well, people, but, uh, um, you know, some scientists, let's say, or, you know, I think Musk mentioned it, of course, uh, mainstream-wise, that, you know, we could be living in a simulation and all these kind of, you know, sort of... Yeah, uh, I like th that. I like that chat. Yeah. Like I said, I don't believe that chat, but I like that stuff. Mm. And I think that... But as a writer, it's quite common that you write something that then becomes true mm. or it becomes relevant, and that's been happening for years. It could be mm. down to the fact that the more you write, the more you more likely you're going to hit some gold. You know, we don't talk about the stuff that that didn't come true. Mm. You know, it's basically got an infinite chance to come true in the future at some point. Mm. So I think there's that, but also there's maybe something more mystical that we're tapped into. Something mm. in the muse is like this. Uh, I don't know, something beyond our, uh, re we, something that we can understand and it's sort of, we're tapping into something and that's where the arts and the music and the words all come from, some sort of weird alien language that we tap into when we're in the zone, mm. but it could just be pure luck. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know, I guess. I mean, it could be from a different dimension, right? Or if we're tapping into our subconscious... And then you talk about like practices like meditation and all these kind of things that sort of take our perception to a different space, right? So yeah. uh, when one is creating art in, in, in well, I guess you can create art in many different ways. Logically, you can create art, right? But on the in the creative side of your brain, um, there's sort of a different, um, perhaps more stream of consciousness form of art, right? And and how how would you write your songs? Like, is there is there a method to sort of is it consistent or or does it change depending on the year or mood of your so. Oh yeah, very very much changes. Mm. The the consistent for me is I try and write lyrics all the time. I'm, lyrics I'm not, are first for you. Sorry. Lyrics are yeah, first the, for you. Well, you know, it's just I write lyrics all the time. Sometimes just the random hip hop instrumentals, but I'm always writing lyrics. Mm. And then we go into ja I, I never end up using the lyrics, but I think it's just important to to it's like training for a a, a fight. You're just mm. so you're fighting for it. So then when you have a really good idea or you're jamming with someone, it's like it just all the words just come together very quickly mm. and very well in most cases. And then there is a bit an element of editing later on that happens. But with the gyro babies, there's, we, there's quite a lot of band members. There's quite a lot of collaborators. Mm -hmm. So that song just there that you're hearing, Fetch and Pitch for that was uh, Joe Dark, who's also in a, a great band check out called The Twistettes. They're actually on our show on Friday night. So she came up with the bass line. I wrote the lyrics to it, mm -hmm. uh, that bass line. And then we brought the rest of the band in, the, the band that was uh, that was playing all the festivals last year with us. You know, he uh, George added some guitar, Rory added some synth in there. And we got a little bit of backing vocals from Sev and Becky. And uh, massive shouts to Ants from the Mickey Nines who actually produced it all. Mm. So that's one example, but there is no, no really a set way of, of doing things with the band anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But usually I like to collaborate, you know, I, 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 I really need to collaborate as well because I'm not a very good at any instruments. Mm -hmm. But I kind of wake up with melodies in my head, ideas in my head and uh, words and... I've been very lucky to collaborate with loads of talented musicians over the years who are, who are up for doing it. Also, how, how do you transfer like a melody that's in your head? Do you, would you hum it or do you play it on, a, on an instrument? Well, I, could, I, I, would, I used to do it on a synth or I could do okay. it or I, or I could hum it. Mm -hmm. or, but I mean, to be honest, that was in the early days, that's how we did it with. But now what I tend to do is, is I'm actually 
I'll, I'll go in with just no notion of what it's going to be. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoy, that's my favourite part, is collaborating with someone live. So mm. hearing a bass line that I've never heard to before, and then feeling the rush of having to write. And a little bit of pressure as well, right? I've got to try and write something good to this. Sure. Mm. Um, or, they, or, or, or someone sends me something over, and, I'm, and I could easily use something that I've wrote already that I quite like, but I just want to write something new mm. for this particular track. Because it's almost like my brain thinks I'm cheating otherwise, which mm-hmm. is a lot of nonsense. Like sometimes I think I can't use that lyric because I've used that lyric before in a poem that no one ever heard, you know, five years ago. And I'm like, so I'm starting to get over that and go, well, you know, I can, I can actually steal my own lyrics that no one's ever heard before. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. But Interesting. I've always felt like it's kind of cheating. I feel like, no, you've got to write something completely fresh for the song. But I'm kind of trying to sort of... You just know, get past that mentally, right? Get it's past a block. that. Yeah. You're allowed to steal your own material. I think that's fine. Yeah, I guess I like I like the the advice as well of just consistently writing. It's it's like training your brain and putting your brain into that uh, frame of mind to be sort of to constantly create words. It's practically the only kind of keep fat I do. That's interesting. So it's just like. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. I know you have an interview after me, so I don't want to keep you any long because it's 20 to 7. So is there anything else you'd like to close off with? Is there anything else you'd like to tell us a bit about the, the Gyro Babies? Anything? I know it's kind of hard well, to promote stuff, but... Uh... Yeah, we've got... Well, I mean, we're on, we're on Spotify. We're on all of them. It took mm. us a while to do that because I didn't... I don't agree with Spotify. Wait, they just mm. they just spent 300 million in Joe Rogan last night. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah crazy. They've yeah. got money. Mm. It seems like they've got money, but yeah, they don't seem to be willing to share that money. Mm. Most of the artists, I think they, they, I think they make good deals with. I think the Beatles got a better deal than we got. Oh let's yeah. Put it that way. Yeah. But yeah, I, I mean, I had to give up just because Spotify, the app, works really well, and I think that the mm. algorithm thing that they use to find the mixes are quite good, mm-hmm. as long as you've got the premium. So they have yeah. got a good app, and it is cheap if you're a user of the app. Mm. So. I thought that's where a lot of our listeners are, and a lot of the listeners were demanding that we come on Spotify. So I think I just gave up in the end and just put everything on there. Mm-hmm. But the best way to support us is by going to the gyrobabies.bandcamp.com, mm-hmm. where you can buy everything uh, direct from us. And there's also a couple of vinyls left. Vinyl, sorry, not vinyls. I'll get into trouble there. Vinyl. There is no plural of vinyl, it's just vinyl. But there yeah, there's go. a few of them left if anyone's wanting uh, one of them. And there is Fetch and Pitchfork, the song you just seen, is coming out in CD this month. And it's got some bonus remixes and a track that just came back to me today called Brains Telling Lies that nobody has ever heard before, ever. And that's a awesome. quite a fun song because it was actually a hook that I wrote 10 years ago that never got recorded. So that's me. I thought it'd be quite interesting to take a hook that I wrote 10 years ago that no one's ever heard and mix that with verses that I wrote this year. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of like... I just wanted to celebrate 10 years. I would try and do that. And it would help me get over my whole, yeah, you can use it. Because some, you know, you, it, there's something quite good about the stuff I wrote 10 years ago. It was, it was a lot simpler, um, but, but it was also more direct. Now, you've got to, and I don't want to, you know, by trying to become a better writer and make things more um, thoughtful, you can also make it more complicated and mm. shit. So I just want to try and find that happy middle ground. But yeah, that's just that. And what you call that radio, we're, we're on every night at seven o'clock. My other band, Jackal Trades, has got a new video out this week. Awesome. So check that I'm out. Check it's called that The Wraith uh, with this Matic Astronaut. And Jackal Trades is more of a kind of hip hop stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of more weird electro hip hop uh, beats, just banging beats. That's more um, recent project, is it for you? Uh, both both kind of been going simultaneously, but Jackal Trades yeah. is newer okay. than the Gyro Babies. Gyro Babies is about 10 years, Jackal Trades is about four years i think mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but both have kind of they run simultaneously but usually you know like two years ago I, I took a year off gyro babies and just did jackal trade stuff mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then it was really fun to do that because then when you come back to the the gyro stuff you're like oh these songs are fun to sing again because mm-hmm. i hadn't sung them for so long so yeah they're both i think they both uh, live forever among each other that as long as i'm alive Mm. And maybe even a new one. Why not just throw a new a new band in there just to confuse things? <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I think I think amazing. it's good. I think it's good to have a to have different projects. Like as well. alter egos, almost right as a, yes. as a as a singer or as a writer. It's confusing, but it's fun. You seem busy, and man. It's great. It's great to see someone someone well, super busy. Yeah, mate. I'm times. very very busy. 
But um, yeah, I think that I, I will be trying to concentrate and just taking a bit of time to write and record because that is the therapy, man. I just I'm just listening to that new video that came out this week. I wrote that a year ago when I got on the day I got really bad news. Mm. And um, it just so happened to be on the same day a somatic astronaut sent me a beat and went, can you do something with this beat? And I just wrote two pages, uh, maybe three pages, probably two pages after you edited all the rubbish bits of it. Mm. And it was just total therapy and it felt like the world did just take, you know, a big, a big lift off my shoulders. And um, then I just seen it today coming out in a beautiful video that Martin Windybank made. Uh, it's just quite therapeutic to go, yeah, you know what I mean? Go through that. There's some tough times we're going through. Mm. But I recommend anyone who can write should write. Yeah, and, um, yeah for sure. And are you, should you, are you just, are you on, have you got another show after me now? Yeah, well? I, I have one guest. Uh, I have a guest now after you as well. Yeah, but cool. uh, yeah, yeah. We, we're going to close off with a performance as well and things like that. So yeah, we I usually, usually go for mm? four a day. Hardcore, mate. I appreciate well, four, appreciate. four twice a week. I'm not every day like you, man. Yeah. No, no, I couldn't do four a day. <laughs> no, it's quite a good way to do it, man. It's something that I've been thinking of. Once live, yeah. the live stuff comes back, then there's no way that I'm going to be able to... I won't be able to handle doing the as many Yeah, you've things. got so your other projects maybe, start again. So yeah. maybe just having like a big Friday night where we just get maybe f like four or five guests on just in one big show is something yeah. that I was already thinking about. So uh, great idea, man. Um, keep mm. up the good work and give me a shout if you ever fancy coming on to, on to my show. I'd, I'd love, love to. to hear more about. And, um, and please send me links to any Irish bands that I should be checking out because I really want, I'm always interested in hearing new music. Definitely, brother. Yeah, no, first of all, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time and coming onto the show. It's it's great to get to know you and, and meet somebody from, from Glasgow. You know, I don't, I don't think I've ever really, I've never been to Scotland, first of all, so it's just absolutely get awesome. Get over here, man. You'll love it. You'll love <laughs> I'd it. Love we'll to, do I'd it. Love to. We'll arrange, let's do a home and away leg. We'll get, you get some bands, I'll get some bands. And we'll do a swap over tour once we're allowed to do it again. I think that's a great idea. No, and I really mean it. I think that's yeah. It's no, really good. I mean it too, mate. Yeah, I, awesome. I don't don't say it. Date. Let's do it. Deadly. Cool. Can, can you send me the the music the new music video as well that you've released? I'd love to play that this Saturday as well with yes. your other project. Um, so yep, please no send me at all, over man. stuff. It's, um, to... If anyone wants to check it, it's jackaltrades.bandcamp. Jack but Jackaltrades is also on Spotify as well. Excellent. But I'll, I'll send you the new video um, just do. now in a message, mate. Awesome. Good luck with the next show, man. I better head off the now. That's um, I've got Jenny Lindsay, who's an amazing poet, coming on next. Awesome. So, um, awesome, Mark. It's an absolute pleasure, brother. Take care of yourself. Pleasure, nice mate. to chat to you. All the best. See ya. All right, guys. So that was Mark McGee. Um, yeah, what an awesome, awesome chat we had there. Mark McGee, all the way from Glasgow. Um, we had a wonderful, wonderful conversation there.